of the most fascinating characters that I've encountered in Bollywood movies have been the villains, especially when they're anti-heroes with a mix of good and bad in their personalities. Deepak Pandey has first-hand experience of Durban's darker side and I met up with him recently to discuss his new book on the city's dance. Deepak had offered to show Zaki around the hood to place his gangland story in context. Deepak! Hey. <laughs> Welcome to Phoenix. So good to be here. Yeah, well, this is my hometown. I'm going to be taking you around to let you know how my journey began, right in the rough and tough Phoenix. And if you may, I've got a ride. Would you like to take one? Deepak Pandey is an author, a rapper, and a former gang member, and I'm about to take a ride with him. Yeah, she is. Let's go. <laughs> Crazy! What a gentleman. Thank you. You grew up in Phoenix. What was it like growing up here? Growing up in Phoenix, firstly, it was the most like exciting time. It was the late 80s, early 90s, you know, the whole post-apartheid era. It was also a time that we kids were doing things that now nowadays kids can dream about actually doing, you know, playing with go-karts and sliding down banks with your, with your cardboard and stuff like that. And now these kids, you can see everything has just changed. I mean, the people here, uh, they're special, you know, we, we've got that bond and we share that togetherness. So I feel there's a good bunch of people that we surrounded around here in Phoenix, you know. Eventually you found yourself on the wrong side of the law. How did that happen? Before I can even know about gangs, I found myself already in one. You know, and then you're doing all this type of stuff and then you realize you hold on, this is not cool and this is not good anymore because when it gets you in jail, that's all your life with it. It's very dark and it's very shallow, so you don't really want to get into it. How did you end up in jail? Moving in the wrong turf, the wrong click, you know, we got involved in altercation one night and the cops came by and they assaulted us, we assaulted them and that just got us in jail for a hell of a long time. In jail, you were faced with a make or break decision. What did you choose and why? It doesn't break you, it breaks your, it breaks your spirit. Well, that's what it did for me. It broke me who I am for the morals and the beliefs that I had deep down inside of me that was fed into me while growing up for my parents and my peers and the people around me. And I made a change to basically come out of prison and that was my only thing on my mind is to get out of this place and I don't ever want to get back in. So this is Phoenix High School. This is where it all began, you know, this is my old school, where I matriculated. We had a little crew, you know, the rappers and the singers and a few dancers, so we had our own thing going on. So the gang mentality kind of infiltrates from school age? Because this is in the Phoenix Unit 2, the most notorious place in Phoenix, obviously the elements from the outside got in here and this is how it all went bad for us. Let's keep touring. This is the High Chaparral, the notorious High Chaparral. This is the hub of the gangland in Phoenix. You know, 1975, this is where it all began. There was like six brothers, the Dorosami brothers, as they were infamous, you know. Whatever they began, and they started the gambling, the alcohol, the drugs, it actually transpired from generation to generation. Is it dangerous for us to be here? Yeah, it is actually very dangerous, you know. Um, but I made a phone call with the guys that actually run the place, and we let them know we're coming, so they're actually expecting us. So it's all good and it's all cool. So everyone knows we're here? Yeah. We should leave. Maybe we should, Maybe we should leave. Well, I hope you enjoyed your tour through Phoenix. Now I'm just going to freshen up and take you into the studio where all the inspiration stuff goes down. What up? Is this how we do it? What's that? What up? Is that goes. What's that? <laughs> You look like you're straight out of a Godfather movie. It's the face and the character for the king of Durban, huh? What role did rap play in turning your life around? It all started with rap. I've been stuck in jail, writing lyrics, getting it out there, taking all the negatives and all the grits and putting it make you productive and something positive. For me, that was everything. Can I ask you to do a freestyle for me? Is that what you call it? Yeah, for all okay. the people out there, I can do something. Um, man, I'm with studs, I've been in the club. The best say I'm lavish, I'm just a young thug. Your boss show me gangsta love. Kiss my ring, give me a hug, set trip and catch a slug in the back or in the front. Ain't no different man, I'm still the Phoenix G. The capo in the streets with your lady in my sheets. You got something to say, man, toss this beat. We'll meet up on the speed. I'll let my number AK speak. Whoa, that is super cool. Well, from rapping to writing, I would love to chat about your book. Yeah, just go straight to it. It took you 10 years to write this book. How did that come about? It goes way back when I was basically getting out of the, the underworld and getting out of the gangland and pursuing my career as a rapper and as a writer. So 
During that time, I was meeting up and rubbing shoulders with a lot of notorious underworld figures from the biggest to the baddest. For me, I had to meet the people that were really involved and the people that were really there to get the real story. How did the gangs in Durban evolve? You've got to go back right into the political struggle and to what was actually happening in South Africa. The, our community in Durban was hit by a very, very disastrous act that was the 1949 riots that we all know about. In the Indian sectors, that was the spark that actually gave life to gangsters actually coming up. Although it may sound strange, but they actually came out to protect the community and the vulnerable. Who were the main kingpins in the Durban ganglands? There was a lot of guys like Choto Bana, Uncle Sunny Morgan, very bright figures back then, colorful figures. And you cannot call these guys gangsters because there's a huge differentiation between the gangs of the past and the gangs of today. And back then they were there, they were the lawgivers and the protectors of the normal civil servants of their community. Rather what we see today, the guys have become self-destructive and they are destructing our youth and the kids. What kind of reception has the book enjoyed? The people are loving the story. There's plans of it becoming a documentary film, a TV series, a feature film. So we've got a lot of things ahead of us and we're just trying to concentrate and head to that direction now. Thank you so much for sharing the dark side with us. Second hand, of course. I just want to say peace out to all you guys out there and thanks for everything, man.